thank you Pastor Rita for the kind introduction and a uh, very good morning to all of you. Today many of our pastors are not around. There is actually a new outreach in the compound. And this morning, Pastor Henry, Pastor Jerry, Pastor Nandu, they have gone to Kappa to support this uh, new outreach and uh, Pastor Henry is sharing the message over there this morning. Today, I'd like to share a topic entitled Stewardship. But before I do that, let's commit the time to the Lord to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, as we come before your presence. We ask of you that, Lord, that even as I share your word that comes from your Holy Scriptures, I ask that your Holy Spirit will bring into our hearts the message that you would like us to share with one another. We ask, Lord, that your presence will be with us. And your own spirit will feel us to understand what you have for each one of us in your holy words. So, Father, we pray, God, that you be with us now. Let your words bring and most of all, convicting to each of our hearts. We thank you, Lord, for all this. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. The Oxford Dictionary defines the word steward as someone who manages or looks after another's property. We have heard many times of the word steward in the circular world. When you are in an aeroplane, you have air stewards or air stewardess. And when you have and when you are in the train or even in a ship, especially when you go on a cruise, you have stewards who will be there, or shall I say they are employed, to look after the needs of the passengers. But today, I'm going to share on biblical stewardship. In the church, Stewardship mostly refers to our time, our talent, and our treasure towards God. It refers to the responsibility that Christians have in maintaining and using wisely what God has bestowed upon each one of us. But what is the origin of stewardship? If we were looking to the Bible, you look into Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, and you will find this particular verse in which the Lord our God gave instruction to Adam, the first man which he created, a responsibility in the Garden of Eden. And in the Garden of Eden, which God had created, was a very beautiful garden. A garden filled with the beauty of nature, with animals, with flowers, with plants, and edible things in the garden. And if you want to look into this particular chapter, we find that the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to walk it and take care of it. And so we find stewardship was first introduced in the Garden of Eden, where God put man or the first man Adam to look after it. Adam is a very intelligent, almost a very intelligent man. A man whose knowledge actually surpassed most of us. And if you look into the Bible, Adam was given the privilege to Deep names with all the animals or all the living beings that were created by God in the garden. And most of the names, sometimes we wonder who gave all those names that we 
call the animals down. The monkeys, the donkeys, the tigers, or whatever name that comes to us, you will run there sometimes. Call the all these thousands of names of animals has come into us, into our knowledge. We don't know how, but we know that Adam was the man who gave names to all the animals in the garden. And so now God has put this Adam to take care of the garden and to take care of all that there is in the garden. It is, or shall I say, it was a great responsibility. Imagine if you have a small garden in your house, you have taken a lot of time to attend to it, to maintain the cleanliness, the beauty of the garden. I know I used to have a small garden in my porch. Of course, as you grow older, you don't have much time, you don't have much strength, and you have no much energy to look after it. And so now I only had potted plants. I cemented the, the, the garden and put potted plants into it. But I still try my best to manage what I had. But you know, it's not easy to maintain the garden. Especially if those who have big gardens. I've seen my friends, they have beautiful gardens. I went to my brother's house and play. He has a very big garden. And, uh, it's so huge, you know, as big as this hall. And there were so many plants which he planted. And I asked him, how do you manage to attend to this garden? Oh, I can't do it alone. I have a garden. <laughs> I have a gardener to come to the house once a while to cut the grass, to trim the plants and the flowers. And so that's why it looks nice. And before you cut, I see there's all the amazing. <laughs> oh, I see, I see. It's really a beautiful garden. It's big, it's spacious, and in the evening you can just sit around and look around all the flowers and those plants that he has you know, attended to it. So you see, it's not easy for Adam to look after the plants, but he knew how to go about it, and God gave him the knowledge and the intelligence to look after it. It was indeed a great responsibility. And so from here we can see right away that the role Adam was given was an important one. God created a beautiful, beautiful garden and made Adam responsible to care for it. So when we look at biblical stewardship, it is therefore caring for something that doesn't belong to us, but for which we are responsible. And there are a lot of references in the Bible of stewardship. And in fact, one of the most popular one is the parable of the faithful servant, found in Matthew chapter 24, verses 45 onwards. And the parable talks about a master who goes on a long journey and entrusted one of his servants in charge of the household. At first, the servant faithfully carried out his master's orders. But when the master didn't return, he began to mistreat the other servants. This servant did not display the traits of biblical stewardship. He mistreated those over whom he had been given responsibility and treated with disdain what the master had entrusted to him. If we were looking into this parable, the master of course refers to our God. And the servants who do touch are just like you and me. The meat servant and the other servants whom he was asked to take care of. And so it is the same like when we are in the church. Our pastors look after the sheep in the church. And if any of the members is mistreated, the lead pastor or the pastors in charge will be held responsible why his sheep was not treated or well in the church. <coughs> if there is any problem in the church, it has to be settled 
in a way that will give peace and harmony to everyone. And so from here we learn that uh, what it means to be a good steward. A good steward must be a person who is honest, trustworthy, and faithful to what the master has given instruction for him to carry out his responsibility. Please not to misuse the responsibility that is being given to him. And so we could Stephen, let's remember that ultimately we work for God and everything belongs to him. In Colossians chapter 3 verse 23 reads, Whatever you do, work and eat with all your heart as working for the Lord. Not for men. And in verse 24, added that we will get an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. <coughs> in life, we all work for an employer. Or in any way we, we, we are, we always have a certain responsibility. And sometimes, when we are working for an employer, we try to work hard, as hard as we can. But sometimes, we can neglect our responsibility. You know, as they say, when the cat is away, the mouse will play. In the sense that, when the boss is not around, we tend to be a bit, a bit more relaxed. We try not to do as much as we should. But then when the boss is around, we try to be as hardworking as we could to show the boss that we are working and on top that we want to gain the favor from our employer. But in the Bible, that is not what it should be. When you are given a responsibility, that work in which your employer asks you to do, you should do it diligently. But most of all, when you are working for someone, it's like also working for the Lord. For the Lord oversees everything that you do down on this earth. Whether you work for someone or somebody, remember there's one on top who is overlooking all that you do. And in the Bible it says that we will get a reward. Although we are saved by the grace of God, our rewards will go according to what we work for the Lord. And so now, let's look at some of the faithful statements in the Bible. Noah was called to steal the animals and people that God wanted to save from the great flood. If you remember the great flood in the Bible, during the time when man became very wicked, that God could not stand the collector of men anymore. And no one was given that responsibility because no one was found to be a righteous man like God. A man who is faithful and righteous, honest and trustworthy. And so God gave him a responsibility to build an ark. And also, on top of that, to bring all those animals of different types, of different species, a pair each to go into the ark, a male and a female. And together, with his sons and his spouses, we find that when the flood came, Noah was able to do what God asked him to do. He built the ark, which was a very big ark. Of course, he can't build by himself. He employed people to do it. And the people did it for him according to the specifications of what God had asked him to do. But people laughed at him as he employed them to build the ark. He told them this ark is to protect them when the great flood comes. The place where the people live, there has no, been, no rain for a long time. 
and they have never seen what a flood looks like. Have any prayer? Have they never told them about that God is going to punish the people and flood the whole area, the whole world? The people did not believe in him. But he continued to build the ark. And as time goes by, the ark was completed and he brought the animals and whatever species that God asked him to, he brought them to the ark. He took the ark to save them from the flood. And so we find that Noah had a very great responsibility. All those that he took care of, of course, were not his, they were created by God. But he took on the stewardship to look after what God had asked him to. The next one is Abraham. Abraham was a steward to the promise to create a great nation out of a wandering people. A nation that later became Israel. Imagine if you are Abraham, you are staying in a place and suddenly you heard a voice that calls you out of where you are staying and asks you to uproot yourself from there. You go to a place where God said, through you I will build a great nation for your people. You know, if it were to be today, you must be wondering whether you are dreaming or not. Or are you imagining when you heard the voice of God asking you to bring your people out of the place where you stay to go to a place? Of course, if you want to read the story, it's a quite a long story in the Bible, where Abraham had to go through a very long journey. Not only a long journey, a lot of obstacles along the way in order to go to where God wanted him to go. And so we find that Abraham was a faithful steward because he was a righteous man and he obeyed what God asked him to do. Thirdly, there was Moses. Moses faithfully stewarded the children of Israel, serving as their guide from Egyptian bondage and throughout the 40 years which they wandered in the wilderness. You know, after the time of Abraham, of course there came a population of people who we call the Jewish race and uh, they were all, in, most of them were in Egypt. For 400 years they were in Egypt. Can you imagine if you are the descendants of Abraham. And if God had promised that you, as the descendants of Abraham, I have promised you a land called Canaan. And for 400 years, they never seem to materialize. And you must be wondering whether God is going to fulfill his promise or not. But we know that it always takes time for God to fulfill his promise or the covenant he had with Abraham. But eventually, they will reach the place. But at that moment, Moses faithfully stimulated the children of Israel out of Egypt, of which they were there for 400 years. But when you look at it, why did God put them under bondage or under as, can say, they were really slaves to the Egyptian government. At the same time, we were also multiplying in population. If you want to have a nation, you must have a people, isn't it? You must have a population of people. You can't have a nation with just a few people. But they had but they grew while they were in Egypt for four hundred years. And by the time they came up, they have about six hundred thousand people when they came up out of Egypt, when Moses took them up to the wilderness, to the land called Canaan. And then we have Ezra. Ezra was a priest during that time when the, the Jews or the Israelites came back under the captivity, the Babylonian captivity. And the, 
you will not be going back after 70 years to Jerusalem. And a group of them went back, not many, about I think 30,000 of them went back. And when they went back to Jerusalem, many of them have already intermarriage with the uh, the Gentiles the Gentiles while they were in Babylon. And when they came back to rebuild Jerusalem, most of them had forgotten the laws of God. And they were living according to their old ways, in which Ezra the priest found it very disappointing. And so Ezra served as a steward to the people of Jerusalem after their return from the Babylonian captivity and taught them the law of God to ensure that they continue to keep the principles of God's commandments. So you find that Ezra was a steward that helped to rebuild the law of God in the hearts of the people who had forgotten about the law of God. And then there is Joseph Joseph served as a steward in Potiphar's household. If you remember, Joseph was sold as a, as a slave by his brothers. And then when he came to Egypt, he was sold into Potiphar's household. But later he acted as a steward while he was in prison. From the household of Potiphar, the wife of Potiphar told a lie. And because of the lie, the husband Potiphar sent Joseph into prison. And while he was in prison, he was a moral prisoner. And he see to the needs of the prisoners. And later on, he came out of prison and served as a steward under Pharaoh, taking care of the needs of the Egyptians and the people of the surrounding area. You know how he rose up from being a nobody to somebody of a high rank in the household of the Pharaoh. And, so, and also in the New Testament, you find that uh, the disciples served as faithful stewards, stewards, teaching the word of God and spreading the gospel throughout the world they had access to. Remember, when God gave them a commandment, before his departure, go and make disciples of all nations. And all these disciples continue faithfully teaching the word of God and spreading the gospel throughout the world. Well, the world to them was at a time where they were all staying, the surrounding regions and the surrounding countries. And so when we understand that our lives belong to God and that we are simply here to work on His behalf, we can begin to understand that there is greater meaning to living than just living for our own gratification. Many Christians today simply associate stewardship with tidings or making donations, but Biblical stewardship goes much deeper than that. Biblical stewardship, also known as Christian stewardship, is the practice of selflessly managing everything we have. Our talents, our time, our money, our relationships, our health and etc. for God's glory. And this has been practiced for thousands of years and its origins are captured in the many Bible verses about stewardship of money, time, and possessions. There are practical lessons that you can learn. And to understand the importance of stewardship, you must remember everything was created by God. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Therefore, before the creation, there was nothing. But God created everything. And so all that we see, we touch and feel, as well as things beyond our natural senses, 
Hafiz. Another reference is taken from Colossians chapter 1, verse 16 to 17, which says that For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. That means things you can't see are uh, yet created by God. You know, in the spirit, there are a lot of things in the spiritual realm that you can't see. But God is the one who created you. So whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. So it is God who holds the planets and the earth in the space. Otherwise it would have fallen off. He created gravity. He created all these things that we can see to hold everything in place in the whole universe. So understanding that God created our world is foundational to understanding biblical stewardship. Because it provides meaning behind everything around us. Because all of creation belongs to the Creator, only God decides who will oversee what He, he has made. There was a purpose behind God's creation of the world, and part of His plan involves us being faithful to manage what we have been given. Let's look at some of the verses that reinforce God's ownership. First, He created. If you are the one who created, therefore you are the one who owns it, isn't it? So everything belongs to God. In Psalm 24, verse 1 says, the earth is the Lord's, and everything in it, the world and all who lives in it. And the psalmist in 89 verse 11 says, The heaven are yours, and yours also the earth. You founded the world and all that is in it. So when you look at these verses, we find that these are foundational verses of God's ownership of his land. And you find that in Job 41, 11 says that everything under heaven belongs to me. But that's what God uh, told Job. Everything under heaven belongs to me. <coughs> when we understand that our lives belong to God and that we are simply managers working on His behalf, we can begin to understand that there is greater meaning to living our life on earth here. God has called everyone to be good stewards, just as He has called Adam to take care of the Garden of Eden. God has entrusted mankind to oversee and manage this planet earth and all whatever he has given to us. We are to take care of this planet Earth, the environment and the animals, for the first task God used to teach responsible stewardship. And so when you look at sometimes the news in the papers, you can see how horrible man has mistreated what God has given to them. And because God, man has neglected to be good stewards of God's planet and creation. We are now experiencing climatic change due to global warming. Every day you read in the news and know how things are getting on in the world. There's melting of glaciers in the Antarctic. There's worldwide floodings and glaciers is included. We had a terrible flood last year. There's so many of the villages were flooded. And last year alone, one third of the country of Pakistan was flooded, wiping out 40 million homes. And we are also experiencing unprecedented heat waves and wildfires, not only around the region here, but especially in the United States. And can you believe it? There's no snow in the ants. 
He will go to the apps, famous for his app fun apps, where they go ski and holiday. And I read recently an article, there's no snow in the mountains in Switzerland. On top of that, now we are experiencing terrifying snowstorms in the country of the US. And there's widespread water shortages in many countries with extinction of, they say, a nearly million species of God's creation. And we are having health problems resulting from burning of fossils and injections of microtoxins due to the misuse of plastics and improper discard of plastics in the ocean. The many parts of Malaysia today are facing heat wave and there is also the haze and this is all due to climatic changes global warming misuse of what of the land that God has given us and recently we read in the papers that the world commemorates Earth Day what is Earth Day is for us to be reminded and to be aware that we should Take care of the earth. The papers you read on the word ESG, Environmental Sustainable Government. Every company is advised to practice ESG in all their manufacturing so that they will not cause any pollution to the, to the environment, to the environment, uh, wherever they are situated. The next scripture on personal stewardship is written by first Peter, by Peter in First Peter 4 10, it says that each of you should use whatever gifts you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various form. In other means nature, whatever talent we have that God has bestowed upon us, let us make use of it. For the glory of God, for the glory of the church, and for His ministry to continue. If we have a talent for singing, a volunteer to be God singers on the stage, volunteer to worship Him and to lead the congregation to worship God, you have been given this talent, so make use of it. For those who are musically inclined and you can play instruments, musical instruments, then volunteer to play instruments to give glory to God. Each time the congregation comes in worship of God. And if you are good in technical things, help in the PA system, help in the computer system to make all things function smoothly, that God may look down and say, well done, thy faithful servant. Our time, let us give time to the Lord. Many of you who are working will always say there is no time. You are so bogged down with so much work. But God gave us 24 hours in a day. 8 hours for you to rest and sleep. 8 hours for you to do your official work. If you are working and you have eight hours left, what would you do with the eight hours? Do you laze around? Go here and there and waste the time? But for those who are parents, of course, they say, I have so much housework to do. I am mature to attend to. Yes, you. I believe you do. Because you are a steward to your family, to your children. But I believe that you would still have time for the Lord. May God give us 24 hours. I'm sure we can give one hand of the time back to God to worship Him, to serve Him in whatever way we could. Our treasure means our assets or our money. Can we use it for the Lord? Can you use it to glorify Him? 
can be used so that his kingdom will be expanded. So as followers of Christ, we have a responsibility to share the love of Christ and the salvation of Christ. Paul in 1 Corinthians 9, 16 says, Woe to me if I do not preach gospel. If we have a talent to share, to teach, to preach, then do it. Paul said, Woe to me. Woe is like something bad will happen to him if he doesn't use the talent that God has given to him. Okay? Uh, for him to do what God has given him, the talent to glorify God. So, more to me if I do not preach his name. So, as Christians, we will not be judged because of our salvation. But we may be judged according to our works. And as I say, our reward in heaven is based on our good works. We are not saved by works, we are saved by the grace of God. But we are rewarded for doing good works. Because in 2 Corinthians 5 10 says that. For we must all appear before the demon seat of Christ, which means the judgment seat of Christ. So that each of us may receive what is due for us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. God has given us talent. God has given us the body. So what are we doing? How are we going to glorify God through this body and through what He has given us? Our body that God has given us consists of flesh and blood. And you know what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20? Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God. You are not your own. You were born at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Each of us has a body. And we must manage our body, take care of, of our body. Not only to be holy from God, but to be healthy so that we can continue to work for Him and to minister in His name. Every part of our body is from God. Our hands, our feet, our legs, our voice, our eyes, everything. Remember the song, it says that Let my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Let's consecrate our body and all that God has given us. Consecrate to him so that we will use them for his glory. And it's a song which says that God make me an instrument. Make me a peacemaker. It says that when it's hatred, let me so love. If there is any injury or hurt among each other, let us pardon one another. If there is any doubt in the walk with God, ask God that He will give you faith to go on. If there is any despair in your life, remember there is hope in God. When there is darkness, let us shed light. And if there is sadness, let us rejoice. So as I conclude, let's remember we are all stewards of God's creation. And the conclusion is the realization that every Christian belongs to the Lord. We are to be stewards of what He has placed before us. Besides time, talent, and treasure. We are also to manage this planet Earth, given for our dwelling and enjoyment. Let us not destroy the environment by our own negligence, causing pollution to the air, to the sea, to the ocean, to the land. We need a healthy environment to live healthy lives. So let's practice good stewardship, for this is our dedication to the Lord, to be responsible and fruitful for Him. And then when we see him face to face, then he will approach you 
and he will command you and say to you out a good and faithful servant. Don't you want God to compliment you? That when you see him face to face, that he will reward you. You know, I was thinking, what does reward actually mean? Somebody once explained to me. You see, when God's kingdom is established on earth, who knows you might be the prime minister of that province? Who knows you might be the governor of that land? Who knows you will hold position of authority that God will give to you because you are a faithful servant? Because you are a good and faithful steward. If you can be faithful stewards now, he will give you higher responsibility when his kingdom comes. Amen? His time's up. Thank you for the attention. And I do hope this mention of stewardship will help to understand that we must work our very best whether anyone sees us or not. Because God oversees everything we do. As a conclusion, and before I conclude in prayer, if there's anyone who would like to, to pray for, as we always end with the healing ministry, we would like you to come forward and we can pray for you. Many of us can pray, not only our pastors, but one another. For we all children of God. And in the Bible it says that we can pray for one another in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. For He has given us the authority to pray for one another, to uphold one another, to encourage one another. So if you have a need or you want to be prayed for, you can come forward to or and that corner that where we always have it, we call it the healing corner, where you can come to be prayed for. The healing corner, let me end with the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much today for your message of stewardship. We know that everything is created by you and everything belongs to you. You have put each one of us here to take charge and to manage all that you have given us. And we ask Lord that you will give us the wisdom, the knowledge and the understanding to manage all that you have given to each one of us. The beauty of this planet, the fruits of this planet, the resources of this planet. Help us Lord to care for it and to make use of it not only for our own enjoyment, but for the glory of your name. For you are our Lord, the great Almighty. In you, we have our being. And Father, I want to honor you each day of our life. That your name will be glorified to each one of us. For we want to give you praise, we want to give you honor, and we want to give you glory. For you are indeed higher than anyone, for there is no one greater than you. We thank you, Lord, for your message this morning. And as we depart from here, we ask for your presence to go before us. Your God words, your blessings, and to protect us in our coming in and going out. Thank you so much, God. In Jesus' most precious and wonderful name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Today, because it's the fifth week of the month, so there is no a food fellowship, but you can continue to have personal fellowship here of in the restaurant or food store on site. Okay, thank you very much and God bless you all.